the Justice Department case is that an awful lot of the hacks and cyber problems we've had over the last five years have been the result of exploits found and created by our security services that were then stolen in in other hacks. And so when you create back doors, the vulnerabilities are much more dangerous than if things are closed off. So I think Facebook's case is right. The challenge for, uh, for Facebook is that the end-to-end -end encryption strategy, from their perspective, is designed to protect them for responsibility for hate speech and all of these other things. And in my mind, there are better ways to solve that problem than creating backdoors and end-to-end -end encryption. I want to get rid of algorithmic amplification. I want to get rid of micro-targeting. I want to make it a lot harder to spread the hate. And I want to make it a lot harder to spread disinformation and conspiracy theories. So there's a, there is a path through all of this. And this conversation, the one that they're having between Facebook and the Justice Department, is talking about only one piece of it. OK, so that begs the question then. And I know you just touched on what, what you think the other path is. But if Facebook does continue with encryption um, and doesn't take the other path that you've just laid out, is it all or nothing, or is there another solution to be had there, too? Well, it's, it's a really great question, because politically speaking, our systems are not working very well on the regulatory front. And so we have this challenge that Internet platforms are pretty much doing what they want. And that's causing massive problems for elections. It's causing problems in, in public health. It's causing problems in privacy and competition. And at the congressional level, we're having fights over things that historically people have always agreed on you know, such as voting rights and things like that. And so I'm very troubled by how we make the regulation work here. I'm hoping that the state's attorneys general are going to be the ones who bring the hammer down on Internet platforms for things like hate speech, disinformation, and conspiracy theories. But at the end of the day, I believe Facebook is absolutely correct to resist this. I do not think we want to be creating vulnerabilities because they're going to get exploited. And if you think about it, the damage from hacks is always going to be greater afterwards than it is before just because you're just inviting all sorts of new people to break in. And all right. So whether it's, uh, it's state AGs or DOJ or whatnot, is there an internal backlash within tech to Facebook from Benioff, Dorsey, yourself, and is that growing? <laughs> yes, but very slowly. <laughs> we have an election coming in 11 months, and, and it doesn't feel like it's moving rapidly enough to protect the integrity of the vote, uh, with one possible exception, which is the thing going on at Google right now. And, you know, the employees are the key to everything if we want to move quickly because the employees of the tech companies have trusted, with good reason, they've trusted their, the executives running their companies for a long time. And right now, Google in particular, but Facebook also, uh, and Amazon, are creating reasons for employees to distrust them. And from that, I think we have an opportunity to create the kind of pushback that would move things very quickly. You remember what happened with Uber when Susan Fowler wrote that extraordinary uh, post about sexual harassment, what, within six months, the entire management team had been changed out. And I think a Susan Fowler moment is possible at Google. I think it's possible at Facebook. And that's what, you know, what I would hope for.